What is art? I'm sure every single one of you watching this video has a different definition for the word art. It is such an abstract question that is so difficult to answer. But if I were to ask you the question, what is content? I'm pretty sure you would all kind of have a clear image in your brain about what content looks like to you. I feel like in today's day and age of the internet, we hear the word content get thrown around a lot more than the word art. And I've become very interested and almost fascinated in the actual differences in the words content and art. More specifically, I was kind of curious about what makes something art? What makes something content? Is there a world where content becomes art or art becomes content? And so I asked you guys, I asked my audience, what is your definition of art and how does it differ from your definition of content? You guys had some really interesting insights into the topic. At iZorbo says that art is made to convey a feeling as to what the creator is feeling and content is made to just strictly entertain. At TRLO says that art is made for its own sake and content is just made for consumption. Fellow creative and friend of the show, Dilla Pillow, states that art is cool and content is just not very cool. It seems very clear to me in my brain that if you are an artist or a creative, you kind of have this disdain towards the word content. Emma Thompson, who's a British actress, who's had a pretty successful career, you've probably seen some of her movies, I've seen some of her movies. She was recently kind of like on this panel or something during like a conference, and she brought up the fact that the word content, as an actress, as an artist herself, uh, she hates the word, man. She said that it is a rude word. She said, I do not like the word content. It makes me feel like stuffing inside of a sofa cushion. <laughs> I came across a channel called Make Art Not Content, which is a pretty ironic name if you think about it because the channel itself is making content, not art, but <laughs> I digress. On this channel, there's a, a video of a girl who is just kind of explaining her own definitions of the word content and art. She says that art is authentic and raw, man. And she said that content is only what the people want to see. Man. <laughs> a writer named Tony Howell states in an article that the main difference between art and content is kind of like the intention behind it, as if artists are there to actually make a difference in the world and content creators are kind of just there to, uh, you know, get rich and famous, baby. That's what it's all about. If you're an artist, you probably have some amount of disdain towards the word content. You like your work to be described as art. You don't necessarily like your work to be described as content. The problem with this bias against the word content from artists is that no one can give me an exact definition of what these two words mean. What, 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 what? The most basic definition that I was able to find for the word art online is the conscious use of a skill and creative imagination, especially in the production of aesthetic objects. That is straight from Webster's Dictionary. However, I don't necessarily like that definition of the word art because technically that definition could apply to content as well. Technically, this video right here is the conscious use of a skill and creative imagination to produce an aesthetic object. And I think everyone can agree with me about the fact that creating art is a little bit more deeper than just, mmm, yes, camera. I came across an article that pulled about 25 definitions of the word art from like different artists out there in the world from different time periods. We got people like Banksy on here. We got people like Andy Warhol on here. We got people like Pablo Picasso. The problem with asking a bunch of different artists this question is that like, Artists themselves are abstract people, right? And then the question, what is art, is a very abstract question. You ask an abstract person an abstract question, you're gonna get an abstract answer. John Cheever here, who's an author, he says that art is the triumph over chaos. Okay, that doesn't really help us. Gustav Klimt says that art is a line around your thoughts. That doesn't really help us. Despite some of the abstract and goofy answers that some of these artists have given us, there were some definitions in there that kind of helped me gather some sort of characteristics that help us define art. Paul Cezine, for example, says that a work of art which did not begin in emotion is not art. This particular definition really stands out to me because this is something that I feel like describes art really well. If you look at any of your favorite paintings or any of your favorite pieces of music, you typically will probably have some sort of emotion attached to that piece of work. Whether or not that's the emotion that the artist was intending you to feel, you do feel emotion through that piece of work. Our buddy Emma Thompson here, that one actress who feels like she's getting stuffed inside a sofa cushion. She brings up this idea as well. She says that she wants to feel something different after she's watched something. Another characteristic for art that I feel like I've kind of come up with is the idea that all art kind of conveys some sort of idea. Typically an artist, when they sit down to create art, they have an idea that they want to get out to the other side of the world 
the other side of the world, of course, being the consumer of the art. The idea can be as clear as day, or it can probably take a little bit more brain power to really understand. Edward Rashaw says that art is something that makes you scratch your head. Trevor Paglin says that art is trying to see things that other people don't see. And Edgar Degas says that art is not what you see, it's what you make other people see. The problem is, is you take these characteristics of, you know, conveying ideas, conveying emotion, and you apply it to content, uh-oh, all of a sudden, <laughs> content does the same thing, right? I'm pretty sure each and every one of you can probably think of a clear image in your brain of what content is. This video, for example, is content. Everything that you see on TikTok is content. Twitter posts and Instagram posts, that's all content. But what exactly is content? What is the actual like definition of content? If we go to Webster and we try to find the Webster dictionary definition of the word content, they say that everything that lives on a website that offers substance to the website is content. And so by this definition, then technically everything, every piece of art is content. Paintings, you know, that shit gets uploaded onto Google Images. Music, that shit gets uploaded onto Spotify. But it goes deeper than that, right? Of course it goes deeper than that because if it didn't go deeper than that, I wouldn't be making this video. When trying to think of a definition for content or different characteristics for the word content, the first thing that popped in my head was that content is very formulaic, especially when you take some of your favorite content creators. They all seem to have some sort of formula to their videos or they're trying to fit some sort of formula within a platform. A Bucket of Jake, fellow creator and friend of the show, he says content is creating formulaically, playing it safe. A plus B equals C over and over type shit. Another thing that I think that is a characteristic of content is the fact that content is very, you know, informational. It's very information driven. Take this video, for example. This is a very informational-esque video. You know, you take videos like commentary videos or reaction videos. There's not really a whole lot of uh, artistic intent, for lack of a better word, with those videos. And then another idea that I had for a characteristic of content was like this, this idea behind like quality versus quantity. As if like all content creators, at least content creators that are doing this, for a living are kind of balancing this fine line between quantity and quality and you have to have some sort of quantity metric to hit in order to you know sustain a career in content creation but not all content creators follow that you know formula of trying to create a new video every week or every other week or every month some people just create whatever they want and that is why there's always exceptions to these rules On one random night, I was scrolling through YouTube and I came across a video called The Insane Production Drama of Kung Fu Panda 4. I don't really care about Kung Fu Panda. I've never cared about the Kung Fu Panda franchise. I didn't even watch the movie, but for some reason, the clickbait in that title, man, insane in all caps, I had to click on this video. One of the assistant directors of Kung Fu Panda 4 kind of went on Reddit and did like an AMA and spilled a whole bunch of beans about the, the production of this movie, which honestly, pretty ballsy of the fucking assistant director. And there was a lot of things that she brought up that kind of maybe, you know, scratched my head a little bit. I am someone who considers films to be a work of art. I think a lot of people would agree to me, with me on that sentiment. It's one of the most popular forms of art. Emma Thompson, by the way, one of our best friends that keeps popping up in the script for some reason. She was literally making the point that all movies should be called art and not content. But Emma, let me bring something up to you. The assistant director, who I'm keeping anonymous for the sole purpose of the fact that I just forgot to write their name down. They were asked, why are all the Kung Fu Panda movies fixed at a 90 minute runtime? The assistant director answered this by basically saying that it's a pure business decision, saying that the shorter a movie's runtime is, the more amount of showings you could have in a single day, which means the more amount of profit the movie can make. This brought up some red flags, in my opinion. Also, I want to bring up the fact that the they kind of shoehorned the original characters into the movie just to, of course, again, increase profitability of the movie. So here's my question. Question, right? If you're actively setting creative limitations on your work for the sake of profitability, then can you truly call that art? We see movie studios all the time making different types of movies for the sake of profitability. Marvel, for example, is shitting out Marvel movies. We see these studios doing reboots all the time. A lot of people online have this argument where these movies are being made just because it makes the studio money. How does it destroy 
the merit of the film being a work of art. If it's created on like a formulaic system and the sole purpose of the film is to make money. The difficult thing is like, especially in this case with Kung Fu Panda 4, is that when you think about Puss in Boots The Last Wish. I find Puss in Boots The Last Wish to be an incredible work of art. Everything from the storytelling in that movie, the, the character design, the art direction, it's all very artistic and there is no doubt in my mind that that movie is a work of art. However, it was made by a major studio that we know has had actively set creative limitations on a piece of work for the sake of profitability. I can't help but think that there were some creative limitations that were set on the writers and the producers and the, and the directors to then fit a formula that would then increase the profit of the film. And how does that destroy the merit of the film being a work of art? I want to bring up another scenario. This is something that Struthless brings up in his video. So I'm kind of stealing it from him, but it's like, a, it's a good scenario. Imagine you are a musician, right? You're, you're creating music. You got your beep boop bops and you want to, you want people to listen to your beep boop bops. So what do you do? Well, you see all these music marketing gurus go on YouTube and they're like, you need to make content. You got to post videos on the TikTok, do TikTok, do TikTok, Instagram reels, baby. Mainline the content to the viewers fucking veins. <laughs> you do this thing where you do like a daily song challenge where every single day you limit yourself to an hour a day to create a new song. You film that process and then you put it out on TikTok, on Instagram reels. My question is, is that art or is that content? Because technically someone could listen to the song without the context of the video and you know assume that it's a beautiful piece of art. But then you place in the context of the video, you place in the context that it's a very formulaic way of creating. You place in the context of the fact that you're setting a creative limitation on yourself. Technically the song itself wouldn't even be made if it wasn't for the fact that the song was being made for the sake of creating content. How does that destroy the uh, merit of the song being a piece of art? Would it be considered art or would it be considered content? I wanna bring up another scenario here. Casey Neistat, friend of the show. Casey Neistat. <laughs> Casey Neistat is one of the most influential YouTubers on this platform. His style is seen all over the place. Some of my favorite YouTubers are influenced by Casey Neistat. I'm sure some of your favorite YouTubers are influenced by Casey Neistat. And something that I've always found interesting about Casey is that he doesn't call his videos videos. He calls his videos movies. Casey is a filmmaker. He's got a background in filmmaking. So when he came onto YouTube and started creating, one of the things that made him super unique was that artistic edge in his videos. Everything's super cinematic. The storytelling is very intentional. The transitions, the music choices, it's all very clear that he has a background in creating art. And his daily vlog series is one of the most artistic things on the platform of YouTube. And this platform of YouTube is synonymous with the word content. And here's the thing too, Casey's work, it has all the characteristics of content where it's super formulaic. He's actively setting limitations on his creative expression in the form of he needs to get a video out every single day. I would not be surprised if within 500 days of creating a daily vlog, he had to sacrifice a really cool shot or a really cool edit for the sake of time. So how would we categorize Casey's content? Where does he fall on the content art spectrum? I want to introduce you guys to the content art spectrum. This is a trademark theory that Professor Kyle has come up with. I have no idea how this got up here, by the way. Uh, I guess got a Patreon now. You can check that out in the description. There's actually a full research doc that is twice as long as the script for this video. So if you want to look into that, dive deeper into this topic, you can find that on Patreon. The content art spectrum. Basically the easiest way for me to think of the differences and the similarities between content and art was to put it on a spectrum. We're on the furthest right, right? Yeah, on the furthest right side of the spectrum, we have pure content. This is like podcast clips with subway surfers playing on top of it. Straight just TikTok brain rot that you mainline into your veins. And then on the furthest left side of the spectrum, we have art. Art in its purest form, like Starry Night right here, Since I Left You. We got Scott Pilgrim versus the world. In my mind, every piece of media that exists online, any physical piece of media, music, movies, videos, it all exists somewhere along this spectrum. I think a good middle ground for something that's like directly in between content and art would be The Office in my mind. We kind of see both sides of the spectrum with this show. There's some really great emotional moments in this show, like the series finale, there's Michael's final episode, there's Jim and Pam's 
like wedding, the, the two part episode, where like the writing's really well done. The way the show's shot is also really artistic, very intentional here. However, there is also some moments in this show where, you know, it can be very formulaic. There's a lot of filler episodes in the show. There's just like moments where you can probably tell that they just needed to get an episode out, so they just kind of got it out. So if we move a little bit further to the content side of the spectrum, this is where you're gonna see stuff like reaction videos here. Got the little fine bros trying to <laughs> to trademark react videos. We have review videos, Mr. Anthony Fantano, commentary videos, Mr. Hassan Piker. This is stuff where it's just kind of just pure information. They have like their own opinions and stuff that are being added in there, but there's not like a whole lot of artistic flair, of course, to the videos. And then as we get a little bit more further over to the middle here, that's where you're gonna start to see some video essayist type videos. I put good work on here because I think the way good work writes their videos is very artistic, very very intentional. However, it is still pretty informational, just kind of straight up information. It is very formulaic and it does have those factors of like trying to consolidate your creative expression in order to fit a, uh, like a formula. I'd say a step kind of further than the video essayists here, we have people like Ryan Trahan. You can maybe also throw some Mark Rober videos in there. These are content creators that they got a little bit more storytelling in their work. Obviously, they're still trying to fit their content to better fit the platform. They got to have their retention tactics in there, but their storytelling is really good. There's some really decent moments in these videos. I also want to bring up Mr. Beast here. Mr. Beast kind of has nowadays two different types of videos. There's the videos that are kind of just more pure content, and there's some videos that kind of can get a little bit more on the artistic side of things. His videos where it's like $1 versus $1 million boat, hotels, airplanes, yachts, that, that's kind of just pure content. There's really no value in those videos other than just entertainment value. You don't really get a whole lot out of the video, you watch it, you forget about it basically. But on the other hand, we have videos like this where it's $10,000 every single day I survived in the wilderness where the storytelling is a little bit more, you know, impactful. He really takes time to develop the characters in the videos. So you can really understand kind of the intention behind the characters in the video. And it really makes their own decisions that you see in the video like a whole lot more impactful. I'm not joking, this thing, this video right here, almost made me burst into tears when I was watching it. We get past the office, past the middle, more towards the art side of things. We got a good old pal Casey Neistat here. For all the reasons that we explained in this video earlier, he's very intentional with like the, the shots that he's doing. He's very very cinematic. The storytelling's top tier. However, his content is very formulaic. He limits himself creatively due to the fact that he has to hit a deadline every single day. That kind of pulls him a little bit more to the content side, but he is overall a bit more on the art side. Now, there's a video that I want to bring up here that I think is almost art in its purest form on the platform called YouTube. It is Agents of Secret Stuff by Ryan Higa. Bet you weren't expecting to see that in this video. This is an old video from 2010 that I used to watch all the time. And I randomly thought of this video when I was researching for this video. I went back and I rewatched it. I remembered every single line. It's a fantastic video. This is probably the best piece of content to come out onto YouTube in 2010. The story is fantastic. They literally say in the description of the video that they just made it for fun, which if that's not art, then I don't know what is. All right, so you look at the spectrum, it's all content and creators. What about other forms of art here, you know? I feel like putting other forms of art is a lot harder to put on the spectrum than content from YouTube and stuff like that. It's a little bit harder to tell like the true intention of the artist when you're just watching a movie or listening to a piece of music. However, I will do my best for the sake of this video. You know those like paintings that you see in like Ikea or like Target, you know, that's like very clearly that it's just there for like a middle-aged white mom to throw in their house on a white wall so the white wall looks less plain. I mean, I feel like that's more on the content side of the spectrum here. Documentaries are an interesting thing. Documentaries are something that, you know, could go on either side of the spectrum. I feel like if you're watching like a World War II documentary on the History Channel, there's not really a whole lot of crazy stuff going on. They're not really, you know, reenacting a lot of stuff. It's just kind of pure information. I feel like that could be more on the content side of things. However, if you're watching a documentary that has like a bit more flair to it, there's more creative storytelling. Like for example, it's ironic because I was just talking about how I got too many content creators on here, but iDubs has three documentaries out on his YouTube channel. I think all of them are super artistic in the way that he tells the story. So I would put that on the art side of the spectrum. Movies, once again, is another thing that's kind of hard to put on the spectrum. Some movies will be easier to place than others. Marvel movies, for example, especially recent Marvel movies, that's probably more on this content side 
of the spectrum. I want to bring up Kung Fu Panda 4 because we talked about this earlier. You know, for all the reasons we talked about, it's probably on the content side of the spectrum. However, Puss and Boots The Last Wish, that's pretty artistic if you ask me. Music is another thing that's really hard to place on the spectrum. When I was thinking about where to place like different types of music on the spectrum, the one thing that came to my mind was the song Old Town Road by Lil Nas X. There's like eight different versions of this song and while you could argue that the very first version of the song is art in its purest form, you know, it's just a dude having fun trying to make something. Quickly the song gained po popularity and they just rode that wave for, for however long. There's so many different versions of this song. I think with every version of the song, you kind of go further and further down the spectrum of the content art spectrum because there's so many versions of the song and I feel like they're just kind of making it for the sake of making it. It loses the artistic integrity of the song, I feel like. That is the content art spectrum. So something that's very important to point out here about the spectrum is that it's, it's very opinionated. You might think that Casey Neistat's videos are more on this side of the spectrum when I think they're more on this side of the spectrum. It, who the hell really has the authority to say where something goes? If the BTS version of Old Town Road, if they believe that that version of the song is art, then who the hell am I to say that that is not art? And that leads me to my final point of the video. Approximately four minutes ago, I brought up this idea of artistic intent. I said that reaction videos and commentary videos don't have a lot of artistic intent. And when I think about what the main difference between content and art is, it is that intent behind the project and when I mean when I say it's the intent behind the project I don't mean is this project intended to make money or is this project intended to entertain or is this project intended to inform I think I mean is this project was this project intended to create something out of thin air out of someone's mind that was not there in the world before and in the creator's mind are they intending this to be a work of art? Well, I can talk about spectrums all day long, right? But I can't be the one to say, yes, this is a piece of art, or no, this is a piece of content, because who am I to say what is what? I don't have the authority to say that. You don't have the authority to say that. The only person who has the true authority to say what something is, is the person who made it. I'm not saying that I have the answers. I never told you in this video that I would have the answers. The deeper I dove into this topic, the more questions I got from this topic. You know, you can't say that everything intended for profit is content because what about the people who are artists who need to make art because they're making a living off their art technically that art is intended for profit because they got to make money somehow that the creator is intending it to be art and they think that what they are making they truly believe that what they are making is art and i think we need to respect that i've never been one to to have this weird bias between art and content as someone who makes art and content i don't care you can call this video art you can call my music content. I don't give a shit. As long as my idea is getting heard, that's all that really matters to me. I want everyone to think about truly what is the harm of the word content versus art? Why is there such a big bias? Why do you have a bias? Because clearly I, ex I expressed in this video that these two things, content and art, or at least the way we see it in our brains are more similar than we think. I can't tell you what content is, I can't tell you what art is, but I can give you thought-provoking thoughts to help you find the answers and have a discussion with me about the answers in the comments down below. Leave some comments. Let's have some discussions, okay? I wanna remind you that I have a Patreon page. <laughs> Link in the description. Tons of cool stuff on there. This is the next video that I will be uploading onto this channel. That's the only hint that you get. Unless you join the Patreon page. Thank you for watching.